I have a horde of crochet ideas, so for 2024, my memo is to check all of them off, or as many as I can, because it's a lofty goal. We're starting off strong with this granny square bonnet. So easy to make, works up quickly. I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't attempt this sooner. Let me show you how. Hey, if you're new to the channel, my name is Rainy. I'm a product designer who loves to crochet. Welcome to my crochet diaries. This channel is where I document all of the things that I make. I try to present the information in a way that's hopefully entertaining and informative for others who are watching as well. So if that's your cup of tea, maybe you're on a similar journey, consider subscribing. Maybe liking some videos, leave a comment if you're feeling generous. It helps the channel out a great deal. Hope you enjoy your stay. Okay, let's talk about what we'll need for this project. I've got some DK weight wool in three colors. I wasn't too sure what combination I was going to use just yet. I ended up with a light blue, a variegated green, and a bright pink color. For this tutorial, I'll show you how to change between all three, so I'll be referring to them as my A, B, and C colors respectively. For your own bonnet, please of course use whatever combination and number of colors you'd like. You could use up to four, or perhaps just the one. Either way, after this tutorial, I'm certain you'll be empowered to have a plate with all of that. Since I'll be using my A color twice, I'll need at least 50 grams of that. For the other two colors, I'd estimate at least 25 grams. I'll be working with two different sized crochet hooks, a 4mm and a 3.5mm. This isn't mandatory, I'll mostly be using my 4mm. The 3.5mm hook will be for the end when I work the edges and ties of the bonnet and I can show you my approach there when we get to it. For tools I've got the usual scissors, a darning needle and optionally some measuring tape. One of my granny squares measures around 10 centimeters or 4 inches and the finished bonnet should fit a standard female adult sized head which is around 53 to 58.5 centimeters or 21 to 23 inches in circumference. I did want to provide these measurements as a reference point for you, just keep in mind that your own bonnet may vary a little in size depending on your own tension and if you're working with a different size crochet hook or yarn weight etc. Let's begin. So with my A color I'll make a magic ring. The way I like to do this is by wrapping my yarn twice over my forefinger, then I pull the first loop up and over the second loop, and then the second loop up and over the end of my finger. I'll remove my finger out of this ring that we've now made. I'll insert my hook and draw up a loop from my working strand of yarn and chain two. This chain two will count as my first double crochet. Now I'll work two more double crochet into the magic ring. And now to finish this set of double crochet, I'll chain two. Now I'll work three double crochet and chain two. So this is the repeating pattern that I'll work two more times to complete the round. To complete the round, I'll slip stitch into the first chain two made at the start of the round. Now I'll tie off 
and cut a 10 centimeter or four inch tail to ladle weave in and that's round one completed. To start round two, I'll grab my B color and I'll join it into one of my corner chain spaces with a standing double crochet. To do this, I'll make a slip knot. I'll identify one of the chain spaces. You can join into any one of them. Now I'll secure the tail end of my knot with one finger behind my work, yarn over and pull up my loops in the chain space as I normally would for a regular double crochet. I'll continue with two more double crochet and then chain two. Now I'll work three double crochet into the same chain space and chain one. And that's the repeating pattern. I'll crochet that into every chain space for this round. Now to join the round, I'll slip stitch into the first double crochet made, which is my standing double crochet. I'll cut off my B colour. Sometimes with the tail end, I'll just move it behind my work like so, and that's round two completed. For round three, I'll grab my C color and I'm going to start it the exact same way as I did for the previous round with a standing double crochet in any one of the corner chain spaces, followed by two double crochet. Since I'm working in a corner again, I'll chain two and work another set of three double crochet and a chain one. This round has an additional chain space between each corner chain space. And for those, I'll work a set of three double crochet into them and a chain one. Now what I've worked is the repeating pattern, so I'll do that again in the following corner chain space. And I'll work ahead and see you to join this round up.
I'll slip stitch into the first double crochet made, tie off, and that's round three, done and dusted. For the fourth and final round of this granny square, I'll go back to my A colour, make a standing double crochet into any one of the corner chain spaces and follow that up with two double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet and a chain one. For the chain spaces between the corners, I'll again work a set of three double crochet and chain one. So I think we're getting comfortable with the pattern that's emerging in what we crochet in what kind of chain space. I'll work ahead and meet you in time to join the square. Let's slip stitch into the first double crochet made and tie off. And that's our granny square completed. Now, here's my recommendation. I've got quite a few ends from all my color changes. I'm gonna weave them in now with my darning needle before continuing on with my other squares. It'll be far more manageable rather than waiting till the end. I'll work an end through the eye of the needle and weave the ends behind the stitches of my work, changing directions around three times to just reduce the risk of anything unraveling. Great, so now I'll be repeating all of the aforementioned steps to make my second granny square. I want to show you the join as you go method, which is a great way to join our granny squares together that saves on yarn by reducing the amount of times we have to tie off. So I want to work ahead to round three and catch up with you to explain how we'll work this method. Okay, with this earlier bonnet prototype as an example, here's square one, our very first square that we've completed. That'll sit here. Directly below it is our current square, square 2, and the top edge of that is what we'll want to join to the bottom edge of square 1. To get started as we did before, I'll work into any corner chain space and complete the repeating pattern once. As I come up to the second corner chain space, I'll just work three double crochet. And then instead of chaining two, I'll take my first square, line it up back to back to this current square. And then I'll slip stitch into square one's corner chain space. I'll 
I'll chain one, secure the stitch and help me turn onto the edge I want to join together. Basically, whenever I would normally chain one, I'll slip stitch into square one's chain space instead and continue to work my sets of double crochet into my current square as usual. And what you'll begin to see is the joins happen whenever I slip stitch into the chain space of another square. We're joining as we go down the line, so I'll continue with this right up to my next corner chain space. work my set of three double crochet again but instead of a chain two I'll slip stitch into the corner chain space of square one then chain one and now that's the edge that I want to join completed for the rest of my square I can continue working my double crochet as normal so I'll again work ahead weave all of my tail ends in again too and meet you ready to begin our third square Okay, for square three, let me show you how we'll join that one in the same method again. Square three will sit to the right of square two, so I'll want to join as I go on the right edge of square two. So let me work ahead on my third square and meet you at the fourth round and I'll show you how to work the join. And I've completed a set of three double crochet into my current square's corner chain space. One detail here is I'll actually want to work my first join diagonally in a square one's corner chain space. To do that, with my work facing upright, I'll just slip into that corner and chain one. That's it. And now back to my current square, I'll work my three double crochet into my corner chain space. And now for the rest of this edge, I'll join into the chain spaces of square two as I've done before. The reason I've worked diagonally before is to reduce any gaps in my joins, which I've seen crop up when I've just worked my joins vertically or horizontally at the corners. So it's a small adjustment, but I think it adds to the overall polish of the bonnet. So once I've finished with the edge I want to join, I'll just work on ahead to complete my third square as normal. <laughs> Okay, let me give you a better idea of the bonnet's construction now that we've learnt the join as you go method. Having completed three squares, I'll want to mirror the way they've been joined with my following three squares. So for square four and five, that's simple enough. I'll just be working my joins into the left edges. For square six, however, I want to join the top and bottom edges with a diagonal join into the corner of square four. Check out the diagram on your screen for an overview on how these joins will be worked. I'll work ahead to join squares 4 and 5 but I'll meet you back at the start of square 6 and I can show you my approach. Okay now for square 6 I've worked my set of double crochet and I'm about to make my diagonal corner join followed by the joins to the bottom edge and then to the top edge to square 1. So as I've done before with my work facing upright I'll line my work up back to back 
and I'll simply slip stitch into the corner I want to join into. And chain one after as it's a corner join and that's it. The rest of the joins for this edge will be between this current square and square 5. So I'll work ahead and join my edges and then I'll work my next edge normally without any joins and meet up with you before my third corner to show you how I'll join onto square 1. I've worked my first set of three double crochet and I'll fold my work in half so both sides are lined up back to back. And now it's just a matter of joining the top edges together. So I'll complete the edge and the rest of my square and meet up with you to discuss how we work our seventh and very last granny square. Here's how my bonnet is looking. I just need one last square to close things up, which I've worked up to the third round off camera. And as you can see, this last square is sort of folded in half diagonally, and that's the way I want to work up my final round and join it. This means every single edge will be joined to another square, but we'll be using techniques we've already used in previous steps. I'm going to start at a corner, and every corner there'll be a few diagonal joints that I'll walk you through. As before, just drop a loop below the chain space. And then I'll just work along the edge of my work slip stitching into every chain space to join my squares. Now at my next corner, I'll work a slip stitch into the chain space between both of the squares. And again, I'm doing this for symmetry and to avoid promoting gaps in my work. So hopefully you're able to follow along. It should feel quite intuitive so long as you're lining up your work. It's clear which chain space you should be joining into next. So this is what I want to see, just a symmetric join at these corners. I'll work the rest of this round off camera. See you soon for the home stretch. I've joined my very last granny square to my bonnet and now that we've completed the majority of it, what's left is to crochet around the edges and work our ties and this part should be very straightforward. I'll switch to my 3.5mm crochet hook and start with a standing double crochet into one of the chain 2 spaces. I'll secure the tail end behind my work and now I'll just work a double crochet into every stitch and chain space. I'll work along this one edge, which will become the opening for the face. As I've said before, if all you have is a 4mm hook, that's fine to use. I've just moved down half a hook size to shape things a little, but it's not a deal breaker. So meet me at the end of this edge. Thank you. 
Okay, I've completed one row of double crochet for one edge. Now all I'll do is chain two, which counts as my first double crochet, turn my work and continue with another row of double crochet into every stitch. I'll work ahead with this pattern and meet you at the end of the row. Okay, I've got the front of my edge down, now I'm going to chain two, and this will be the start of a row of double crochet along the bottom edge of my bonnet. I'll just add a stitch marker in so that it's clear. Now for my ties, if you've watched any of my headband tutorials, I'll work it the same way. I'm going to chain 51, with the one being my turning chain, so I won't work into that one. Now I won't work into this first chain from my hook, but into the second one. You're welcome to work into the top loops of your chain, but I prefer to work into the third loop or the back bump, which is at the back of the chain. Either way is fine. I'll work single crochet stitches into every chain, and I just do this to thicken the chain while having a neat edge. Now that I'm back at the start of my chains, I'll want to work just one row of double crochet along this edge. As this chain 2 that I've made earlier counts as my first double crochet of the row, I'll want to work 3 more double crochet into the sides of these stitches, which can be a little strange to start, so just work slowly. And now I'll continue down the line and meet you close to the end of the row to start our second tie. I'm at my other end and I'll be working into the sides of these double crochet stitches. I like working two in each side, so first two. And now I'll work one double crochet, and kind of in reverse to the way we started the other tie, I'm going to start chaining my tie. I'm going to complete my tie off camera. And now to complete the project, after my 50th single crochet, I'm going to work a double crochet into the side of the stitch here. I'll tie off, take some time to carefully weave my tail ends in, and that's the completed bonnet. If you followed along with me, well done on working up this super cute bonnet. I'd suggest giving it a wash and then you can debut it to the world. If you have any questions, please just comment below. I'm happy to help out. 
Don't forget to tag me on TikTok if you make this bonnet. I love seeing your remixes on any of the tutorials that I make. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.